Hi again, and we are on page 223, and this little uh, video is regarding an extension to section 4.2, and it's called Identify Discrete and Continuous Functions. So uh, maybe I should actually write that up here, Identify Discrete and Continuous Functions. So I'll just quickly write that in. And as always, let's talk about the vocabulary that we would need to know um, to understand discrete and continuous. And obviously, those would be the two words, discrete and continuous. What is that? Okay. I think the best way to explain a discrete function versus a continuous function would be to use a real-life example first. Okay. And if you look at the top of page 223, I'm going to read this paragraph that they have there. You can just follow along. It says, the graph of a function can consist of individual points, kind of like you see in the picture below. You can see a picture of individual points. Early in chapter 1, when I had you make a table and a graph of a function, remember I said don't draw a line through it, just individual points. That would be an example of a discrete function. However, as you did yesterday in your homework, the graph you drew would have, in many cases, you drew a line through that. That would be an example of a continuous function. Okay, so that's a line or part of a line with no breaks. That's continuous. Now, how does that happen? Well, let's talk about a couple of real life examples. Let's say that you went to Kroger and you went to buy your favorite two liter bottle of pop, and I'd say this price is pretty accurate. The cost of a two liter bottle of pop typically is roughly $2 per bottle. Okay? And the equation then for that would be y equals 2x. Now, let me make a table for that. Okay? I could buy no bottles, I could buy one, two, three, or four. And let's say that there's a limit. Let's say that this is a special. Let's say you get this special price for up to four bottles. So I'll put a little note in there, up to four bottles. Okay. Well, the only values I can plug in for X if I can buy up to four bottles would be I could buy zero, one, two, three, or four. For example, I can't buy one and a half bottles. I can't buy 2.1 bottles. So right now, my domain in this particular problem would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It would only be those whole numbers from 0 to 4. When I graph this, then, when I decide to graph this, of course, I would only be graphing individual points. I don't know if I did that. Yes, I did on my next slide. You can see I graphed the point 0, 0, 1, one bottles, 2 bucks, 2 bottles, 4 bucks, 3 bottles, 6 bucks, 4 bottles, 8 dollars. I graph that. This would be an example of a discrete graph. I can't buy one and a half bottles. I, I don't want to draw a line or a segment through this. If I did, I would be saying it's okay to buy 3.2 bottles. I can guarantee Kroger will not allow you to buy 3.2 bottles. Okay? So there's an example of discrete. Now let's go through a real life example of continuous. I can use the same information, but maybe in a little different way. Here would be a continuous example. Let's say I'm going to buy grapes. And if you've ever been to Kroger, you buy grapes by the pound. In fact, they have a scale there. You can weigh your bag of grapes. So it's the same equation. Y equals $2 per pound. But here is the difference. There's a major difference here when you buy grapes. Okay? I could buy, and oh, and by the way, let me add one thing. Let's say it's the same special. You can get that price up to four pounds. So I'm giving you the same conditions that I did over here with the bottles of pop. But there is a difference. I could buy no pounds of grapes and pay nothing. Now, when you buy bags of grapes, you could 
hypothetically buy four tenths of a pound and pay two times four tenths, pay 80 cents. You could buy one pound and pay two dollars. You could buy 1.1 pounds and pay two dollars and 20 cents. You could buy 1.11 pounds. I think you're getting the idea of what I'm saying here. Okay? You can buy any amount all the way up to four pounds of grapes. Okay, well, if I graph this, so let me add this. I could have bought, let me just move this down. I could have bought two pounds and paid four bucks. I could have bought three pounds and paid six, four and paid eight. But not only could I, not only do you see the same values that I had on my first table, you also have these extra values that are in between 1 and 2, 0 and 1. You know, I, I could have bought 2.7 pounds of grapes and paid $5.40. So when I go to graph this, I would still graph these points, but now I would draw a line through this from 0, I shouldn't call it a line, but a segment, from 0 to 4. This would be the correct graph for the grapes situation. So buying the bottles of pop, that would be a discrete graph. Buying the grapes, that would be a continuous graph. Okay? Any questions on that? We can bring in class tomorrow. All right? But I think, I think what I showed you there will probably make sense between the difference in continuous and discrete graphs. Discrete are just the individual points. Continuous is the individual points also, but we would draw a segment or a line through those because you could have values in between those points. Okay? Uh, let's go, should I have these layers off? Let's go to number one in the book work. And in number one, it's going to ask you to graph the function with the given domain. Classify the function as discrete or continuous. Okay, so first of all, a couple things I wanted to I wanted to show you here. Here's my function. It's already solved for y, and my domain is negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. In my last video, I wanted to show you how you could use your calculator to help you with this, and I'm going to do that today. All right. In fact, I'll do it right now. So here's my function. Now, here's the, remember yesterday, or the, I should say the prior video, I always told you to make sure you solved your function for y first if it was not already solved for y. Here's the reason. If your function is solved for y, you can ent enter it into your calculator. So I'm going to do that right now. y equals negative 2x plus 3 is my function. So let me get off of this and let me go to my graphing calculator. And it will pop up here in just a second. This is kind of a neat software I have on my computer, TIA SmartView, and there's the calculator. Okay? Now, I said, oop, wrong button. I said that the function is y equals negative 2x plus 3. So let me go to my calculator and type that in. Here's how you do it. And by the way, any keys I hit, you will see up here. So if you ever need to stop the video to find out what keys I hit, just look here. So y equals, and you'll see this screen. And remember, I said the function was negative 2x plus 3. So I'm going to type in negative 2. This key here is my variable key x plus 3. There's the function. And you can see the keys I hit to get that. Now, if you look very carefully right now, if you look very carefully right here, shouldn't do it in black, let me get a different color, yellow. Right here, can you see the word table here? The word table is written there. I can create a table of that. This is how I do it. All I need to do to create that table is hit second table. Now, this will create a table for you. Now, remember, my domain, let me go back to my previous slide. My domain, 
my domain was negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Well, my graphing calculator doesn't know that that's my domain, so I need to use a little common sense. My domain is actually right here. Let me get that back up here. There we go. My domain is right here. You can see it. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Well, there are the y values that go with my domain. So my calculator is actually making the table for me. It's negative 2, gives me 7. Inputting negative 1, it outputs 5. 0 outputs 3. Inputting 1 outputs 1. Inputting 2 outputs negative 1. So when I go back to my table, let me get to my table. Got to move back. So now when I go to my table, there is that table. I just took it off the calculator. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that. Negative 2, 7, negative 1, 5, 0, 3, 1, 1, and 2, negative 1. Should I draw a line through this or a segment through it? Well, the answer would be no. If I draw a segment through it, that means that I could have the point negative 1.5 something. Well, negative 1.5 isn't part of my domain, okay? This function would definitely be. So in other words, I put red here. If you do that, it's wrong. Do not draw a segment through that, okay? I can't have the point zero, I'm sorry, 0.52. That would be wrong. I should have done that in red, okay? I can't have that point, of course. That would be incorrect, okay? So this would be an example of a discrete function, okay? I hope that using the calculator and all that made sense, okay? Uh, I should turn these layers off. Here's one more. Y equals X in question two, and this time the domain is all reals, okay? Uh, well, that means I can plug in anything I want. So I don't even know if I need my calculator for this. I could plug in 3 and get 3. I could plug in 2 and get 2. I could plug in negative 4 and get negative 4. Heck, if I wanted to, I could have plugged in, and I'll do another one, I could have plugged in something like uh, negative 8.75 and gotten negative 8.75. Okay, well, let me graph. I'll graph these first three points, 3, 3, 2, 2, and negative 4, negative 4. Are these the only points that I could graph? Obviously the answer is no, I could have graphed others. Could I graph the point 0 0.5, 0 0.5? Well, sure I can. So in other words, it's not just these points, it's everything in between. I should take a ruler, draw a line through this, put arrows at the end, this is definitely an example of a continuous function. It's any, I can plug in anything. I could plug in 0 0.000001 if I wanted to and get 0.000001. Okay, so anything I want to plug in, I can. I got to draw a line through this and put arrows at the end. I can plug in anything I want. Okay, um, I gave you a couple examples. I think that's all I needed to show you on this video. Uh, when you come in tomorrow, we'll practice the book problems. I think I have a little worksheet that goes with that, too. All right? I will stop the video here.